Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Coach Susan, and I'm very, very happy to have you on here for another episode of Finance Friday. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video talking about some savings avenues that I do not recommend. You guys really, really loved that video. In case you missed it, I'm going to link it down in the description box down below. Now, one of the questions that I got a lot was whether I recommend circles as a savings and investment avenue. So I thought for this video, I should probably prepare something for you to kind of like a crash course so that I can tell you everything I think you need to know about circles in Kenya. So if you're curious about circles, if you want to know everything there is to know about saving in a circle, getting loans from a circle, dividends in a circle, stick around. Circles generally are deposit-taking institutions um, that eventually end up giving credit to their members, right? So I think the first thing that I think is very, very important for you to know about circles, if you're interested in joining one, is the actual purpose for why you should join a circle. One of the biggest mistakes I see people making is um, taking an investment or a savings avenue and using it for the wrong reason. So why should you join a circle? You should join a circle if you are interested in taking credit facilities from the circle. Only then should you actually commit your funds primarily and for the long term to a circle. I'm going to give you the reason why. Now, if you watched my previous videos or, or uh, my previous video on some of the savings avenues that I do not recommend, one of the reasons that we don't recommend those savings or investments avenue avenues is because your savings don't necessarily earn enough to even barely compensate you for inflation. Remember that inflation is actually eroding the purchasing power of your money. Now, when you put your money in a circle and you do not take advantage of the credit facilities, in other words, all you do is just save, 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 but you never take out loans, there are two things you are missing out on. Number one, your savings in a circle don't necessarily earn you the best of interest rates. So if you're planning on just saving to earn interest, there are better avenues or better options. For example, the treasury bills or even a, a simple money market fund that could earn you better interest on your savings. The other part that you're really missing out is that you're, you're kind of like, it's almost like you're giving your money for it to be put to work by other people, but yourself, you're not putting it to work. How circles make money is that they lend the people who are actually taking out loans. Most of them lend from around 11 to 13 percent. So the circle is actually making use of your money by lending other people who are making use of that money to invest in maybe some capital intensive projects and to expand their businesses. So you're really sleeping on yourself if all you do in a circle is just save, 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 but you're not taking advantage of the credit facilities. So what am I saying? The primary purpose of why you should join a circle. Like, for example, I'm in a circle and the only reason I'm there is because I know at some point um, in the long term um, or in the medium term, I am going to need a loan for a capital intensive project like real estate, uh, real estate acquisition or even building. So that's the first reason. Understand the purpose as to why people join circles. Join a circle when you know that you need at some point in the near future credit facilities so that you can actually take advantage of the lending services. Remember that they actually offer better um, or rather what I would call more lenient lending services outside of banks. So you'll find like for an unsecured loan in a bank, you're probably looking at around 15, 16, 17 percent per annum on your interest rate. However, if you're trying to take out um, a, a loan in a circle, as long as you have guarantors or um, even if you have self-guaranteed, you're probably going to get a lower interest rate uh, on your loan, around 12, maybe even a maximum of 13%. So if you do not want to be taken advantage of by some of the predatory lending services that some of our banks offer, you are much, much better off saving um, up your money in a circle so that whenever you require credit facilities, then you can take advantage of the lower interest rates that circle offer on 
or rather the SACO's offer on interest rates. So the number one and the utmost purpose for joining a SACO should be because you want to build a deposit and you want to build a history so that you can access more affordable credit facilities. The second thing that you probably want to understand before you join one um, is to actually understand how to join a, a good SACO or how to even research a good SACO. Now, the first and the most important thing, and this is really, really, really important, guys, is to ensure that the SACO that you are joining is actually licensed and registered by SASRA. I've talked about this before. SASRA is S-A-S-R-A, and this, are the, um, uh, this is the body that actually regulates, uh, regulates the cooperative societies, the SACOs, right? Now, there's a threshold that they require a SACO to have for them to be under SASRA. So that's around 100 million. So when a SACO has built its client deposits all the way to 100 million, they have actually reached the, uh, the, the, the threshold for SASRA to begin regulating them. Now, there are very popular SACOs that are A, either not licensed or registered, uh, but they are popular. So I've also found a lot of us finding ourselves in some, in some sticky situations with SACOs because the SACO is popular, so we assume because it is popular and it is known, it's actually licensed and regulated by SASRA. So please ensure that you're not just joining unregulated groups that have come together to for a common purpose to uh, contribute money because the, the reason is that if anything was ever to happen in terms of like either mismanagement of funds or someone even running away with the funds of the group, you're not going to have any legal backing um, to bring these people forward to authorities and for you to even attempt to claim back your money. All right. Now, I am aware that there are circles that are also um, regulated at county level. Some of them that are not necessarily, um, they've not reached that threshold of 100 million. But what I'm saying is that my recommendation would be that when you're looking for a circle, look for one that is, has actually met that SASRA threshold and they are actually regulated by SASRA. That I should tell you that they have quite a number of people who've invested in them. They have gone through the screening process because, of course, for SASRA to regulate and license you, there's a number of screening um, steps that they will do to just find out that the management is right, the way money is being handled is right, the systems and the way cash flow is being handled is right. Now, we are not saying that SASRA regulated circles do not have any issues at all. Like you're going to just have the best uh, time ever. Most of the time, yes, you are. But um, sometimes you will also find that some SASRA regulated circles have had an issue here uh, time and time again. It is not the most common or popular thing to happen. However, if that happens, you can always uh, approach SASRA or report to SASRA of any um, irregularity. So that is number one. Number two, after you've uh, checked on registration and regulation, unless you are going to self-guarantee, what is self-guaranteeing? Self-guaranteeing is when you want to take a loan, you can guarantee uh, yourself either on your deposits. In other words, you have quite a number of savings. So that means you don't even need a guarantor to approve uh, for the circle to approve your loan. Um, or probably you're going to provide an asset, a title deed or something of the sort, right? Now, unless you're actually going to self-guarantee, please do not join a circle, guys, where you know no one. All right? Um, I think sometimes when we are asking for recommendations, someone will tell you Safaricom Sako is really good, uh, Stima Sako is really good, Kenya Police Sako is really good. And I agree, all of these Sakos are actually quite good. However, if you're just the only one who knows yourself there, when you need a loan, it's going to be very hard to get at least four people to sign off on your loan. All right. So one of the tips I give people when I wanted to join a Sako, I was actually just almost out of uni. I just talked to like uh, four of my other friends who we'd gone to like school with and I asked them, you know, do you have a circle? And we just encouraged each other for each of us to open a circle um, in Stima Circle. All right. So so that whenever one of us needs a loan because we know each other, it becomes easier to sign off on the loans. I would personally never sign for a stranger. OK, and this is something I see a lot of people making mistakes about. Um 
And I also would not request a stranger to um, to sign for me. So a lot of us are having issues getting loans because you cannot get a guarantor because you joined a circle where you know nobody. So again, there are only two options to get the loan. Either you self-guarantee against your savings or an asset or you join a circle where you actually know people or you uh, or rather you kind of like gather your friends or people you trust people whose money habits you actually trust and join the circle together that way you can actually be able to um provide an an you know accessibility for loans and then the other thing that you need to know is generally the documents they're going to ask you are just the simple documents your id um maybe your uh, pay slip or your business bank accounts if you're in business, your care pin certificate, and most of them have, they require a very minimum opening fee, some 3,000, some 5,000, and then of course you can top up um, regularly every month if that is an option that is available to you. So those three things are very, very important. Regulated by Sastra, you're, you know people in that circle, and you ha you have also understood the bare minimum amount that you need to actually become a member of the circle. Now, this particular part is very, very important. So I need you to pay attention, okay? When you join a circle, you're probably going to be depositing money or you're going to be given two options of where to deposit money, okay? And a lot of us get confused here. We have deposits and we have share capital. Now, I'd like to talk about the two of them because this could be the fine line between you enjoying your stay in a circle and you're feeling like the circle has completely ripped you off. The other day on Twitter, I actually saw like a thread that was trending and guys were really, really mad and they were saying, you know, quite a number of upcoming circles in Kenya are refusing to um, refund people when people want to exit the circle. And um, upon just reading the comments and trying to figure out why would this circle refuse with your money, I realized that some people do not understand the difference between that deposit taking account and the share capital. So can we talk about those two? Great. Now, what are your deposits? Remember we said that a circle is a deposit taking institution, which uses those deposits to give loans to its members. Now, your deposit account is the account where you deposit money so that you can build savings. All right. Once you've built your savings, you can actually be able to take a loan against those savings. Now, what does that mean? Most circles will give you a loan of up to three or four times your total savings in that circle. So if I have 100,000 saved up in my circle, my circle can give me a loan of up to 300,000. In other words, three times my total savings so if you want to build savings so that you can be able to access loan facilities you must confirm that where you're actually depositing the money some circles have very good structures so the deposit account and the share capital account are two different things but some circles it's the same account and you're the one to inform after you've done the deposit where you want that money to go so if you're trying to build savings all right, for you to be able to access loans, then you need to um, confirm that you're doing the, your deposits in the deposit taking account. So always confirm that with your circle. If you're already in one, please just confirm um, again that that is where your money is going because that, those, that, that amount is what will determine how much you can get in loans. Now, the other account, which is the share capital account, it is for buying shares in that particular circle. It's the same way you buy Safaricom shares or KCB shares in the stock market. So you buy those shares. And why do we buy shares? We want to own a part of that company. When you own a part of that company, it means that when they do make profit every year, you're paid what is called an annual dividend. Okay, so your dividend ideally is your, your share in terms of like, in, in other words, when they make a profit, that amount they share with you from their profits, that's what your dividend is called, which is why circles also allow you to deposit some money in the share capital account so that you can own a bit of that company in terms of shares or shares in that company so that when they actually make a profit, then you're able to earn dividends. Now, where does the problem come up, guys? 
The problem comes up when you deposit money in your share account only without knowing that for you to access a loan, you ha must have deposited money in the deposit account. Now, two things you need to know. The amount you deposit in your uh, deposit account is actually refundable. So that's number one. Uh, your, deposits amount, uh, your deposits are refundable and they're the ones which determine how much you can get in terms of loans. All right. Your share capital. And this is very important, guys. Your share capital is non-refundable. And this is one of the reasons why so many of us have problems because you, you, you did like 400,000, 500,000. But where did your money go? It went to the share capital. The share capital is non-refundable. So when you go to the circle to access your money, what happens? They tell you, you need to look for a member within the circle who would be a willing buyer of your shares. So in other words, you're going to sell those shares to that other member for you to recover your money. And that is why one of the reasons why some of us have got, had a very disappointing um, experience is because we didn't understand the difference between your deposits account and your share capital. In fact, this is the most important part of this video, guys. So if you can just understand the uh, deposits are refundable, that is, these are the ones that deposit, uh, uh, determine how much I can get in terms of a loan. The share capital is non-refundable. If I want to get my money back, I have to find a willing buyer from the group. And those are the ones that determine your dividends. So deposits, loan. Share capital, dividends. All right? And your deposits are the ones that you can uh, recover back after you've actually, um, you know, you want to leave the circle, but the dividends are actually non-refundable, you'd have to sell them. So that is very, very important. In case you've had some level of confusion um, with those two, please contact your circle. And if you're a newbie and you haven't already joined one, please ensure that you understand where to deposit your deposits and where to put uh, your share capital so that those two don't get mixed up because at the point you need to access a loan or at the point you need to exit the circle then we have a problem now the fourth thing that i need uh i i think you really really need to understand now that we've talked about the deposits and the share capital is the withdrawal terms of a circle again what happens when you want to pull your money out or when you want to um, leave the circle. That's very, very important. Now, again, this is highly determined by the where most of your money was. Was it in the circle deposits or was it in the share capital? Now, the withdrawal process is usually quite simple. If you had deposits in a circle and you want to leave, in other words, you want to withdraw your money and you want to close that account, what they will do is that they will refund your money net of all liabilities. Now, let's talk about what liabilities look like in a circle. The obvious liability is that if you owed a loan to them, then you cannot exit until you finish paying that loan. So let's assume you had deposits of around 500000 but you still owe 300000 What they will do is that they will deduct all the money you owe them, and then the balance is now what you're going to get back. However, Another liability that some of us are not able to remember is that maybe let's say you guaranteed person X. They were taking out a loan. You signed off as their guarantor. Now, most of us do not understand the repercussions of signing um, off as someone's guarantor. In other words, you're saying that if I believe in this person, I trust them, I vouch for them. In case they're not able to repay, then you can deduct their amount from my account okay so if you're one of the guarantors of a person who has defaulted on their loan in other words they are not servicing their loan or they completely defaulted on paying um, their loan if you have guaranteed such a person that liability is actually going to fall on you so when i say they will give you back your deposits net of all liabilities i mean they'll give you back your money net of the loans you owe or net of the um, the portion of money that the person or the people you guaranteed um, have not yet paid. You understand? So this is not someone who's servicing their loan ideally. It is someone who um, completely defaulted. So if you need to exit a circle, then it is important to let the people who you have guaranteed, who are still servicing their loans that you plan on leaving the circle, that they should probably find someone else to sign off on them, which is why I don't recommend 
um, signing off on strangers because that person probably left your workplace, they relocated, you can't reach them. When they find out you're trying to exit, they are no longer uh, picking up your calls. So those are some of the challenges that you might face when you're trying to now exit, um, exit a circle. However, if you're able to, if you don't have any liabilities, in other words, you don't owe the circle anything, you do, you're not dealing with any case of defaulting uh, from people you had guaranteed, whatever balance you have, they're going to send it back to you. And this process usually takes around 60 days. So you should, uh, you should get it within two months at, at most. So again, um, don't panic. Don't panic when you've requested and then it's just two weeks. Most of the times, just that whole entire process will probably take around two to three months. So you want to also be cognizant of that when you're joining the, the circle. Circles are not necessarily the most liquid places to put your money if I'm comparing with like a bank or a money market fund. All right. Now, if you had money again in the share capital, when you're trying to exit the circle, unfortunately, that money is not going to be sent um, to you. So I know a lot of people who've been wanting to get back their money, but then they, they didn't know that they were putting their money in the share capital. The only way to recoup your funds is to find a willing buyer. And as you can imagine, that can be very difficult, guys. Um, so I guess that is where a lot of us have a challenge with circles because you only find out about that when you want to leave, that you're supposed to find a willing buyer. And sometimes no one is willing to buy non-refundable um, shares so that's that's one of the challenges i mean if it worse comes to worse unfortunately you just have to leave the money there in terms of shares and just be getting your dividends if you're lucky enough to have joined a circle that um does very well profit wise and uh, pay annual dividends all right so that's very very important now the last thing maybe is to just highlight on how dividends work in a circle uh, I already explained that dividends in a circle are almost the same way you would buy shares in any other company, either a private company um, or a publicly listed company in the Nairobi Stock Exchange. You're putting money towards the ownership of that particular circle. You're saying, I believe in this vision. I believe in this particular institution. I would want that as they make profits. Because remember, circles make quite a bit of profits. Um, when it comes to um, the the lending services, because remember they are lending people, making profits, um, getting the money back, and all of that. So those are some of the things that um, that will contribute to the profits of a circle. Now the only thing that you need to understand is that the dividend rate is not fixed. So some months, uh, some years, sorry, the dividend rate is going to be like thirteen percent, fourteen percent, sometimes even fifteen percent. Now what determines what you get as a dividend every year is the overall performance of the circle so in other words if the circle does very well this year and they make a lot of profits the dividend rate is going to be high so you're going to get a very good annual dividend that year again your dividends are calculated based on how much shares you have bought so if your share capital is thirty thousand shillings you're going to get that much if some people have even like 300,000, 1 million in share capital. So obviously, they're going to get that. In fact, guys, one of the reasons I was very, very encouraged to join Asako when I was in high school, I was talking to one of my mentors in our church who told me that, uh, you know, they were very excited that day. And I was like, why are you so excited? They're like, my Asako dividend just came in and I'm going to pay my child's school fees. So in my mind, I was like, Honey, how much are you getting in a circle dividend that like this money is going to come in and you're going to pay off like some school fees areas? So I got very curious and that is how I ended up joining a circle. And for sure, I've been there quite a number of years now, maybe over six years now. And I've seen as my deposits have grown, as I've also increased my share capital ownership, I've begun enjoying better and better dividends. And honestly, when you have good money, um, the dividends are really good. So you're killing two birds with one stone in t when you join a circle. I highly, highly recommend circles that have ticked these boxes we've talked about. A, a credible circle that has a, a good um, reputation. Number two, a good dividend payment policy. A circle where you know people so or you've joined with people who you trust each other so you can actually access loans. If all of these boxes have been ticked, I highly, highly recommend circles as one of the avenues, especially if you want to avoid being charged crazy interest rates when you'd require a loan from a 
bank and especially if you do not have assets like a title deed or a logbook um, to guarantee yourself. I've seen so many people uh, buying property with circle money, building property with circle money, um, educating their children even with circle money. So they are very viable source of, um, of, of, of savings avenue, credit facilities, and also dividend income. So you can see they kind of like are checking those, especially they giving you um, lenient and good credit facilities. And then of course, if you do intend on getting some shares, then you're also able to get some good um, investment income in terms of dividends. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I've really enjoyed talking to you guys about Sako. I hope that demystifies the questions or some of the concerns that you've had about Sakos. Now, I like to leave this as a disclaimer. We've talked about all of these things and you guys know on this channel, I keep telling you that there is absolutely nothing under the sun that is a sure bet, okay? So in case you find yourself having challenges with your circle, you're looking at it and you're like, this circle is Sastra registered. Um, why are we having issues? Always just reach out. When you go to the Sastra website, I, I'm, I'm going to link it down in the description box um, below. Um, when you go on there, you'll see their email, their contact, and you can actually... Um, be able to reach out to them with your complaints. If you haven't joined ASACO yet, the last thing I'm going to say is do your due diligence and your research where they smoke this fire. So don't go to ASACO that has already had a lot of public uproar in terms of like them not paying uh, back their clients. You want to just ensure that you join ASACO that has a good um, track record, has good reviews from its members, and of course, you want you might want to also convince some of your friends um, to join your circles. Now, guys, please always remember your circle and the people around you, your network could very easily become your net worth, especially when you're thinking about circles. So you need to also develop uh, circles of friends that you talk to about money or talk with. Um, regarding money matters so that when you're interested in doing something like joining a circle, you have a crew of people that you can actually join it with. Um, that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, if you have any questions, you know what to do. Leave them down in the description. Uh, I mean, in the comment section down below. Share the video with your friends and also remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Finance Friday.